What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another TDH upload. My name is Travis and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you guys couldn't already tell by the title, we're going to be going over my latest purchase, which is a 1972 Johnson six horse outboard tiller motor. I grabbed this guy for my John boat because my four horse is just a little slow. If you guys have been following along, you already know the deal with the John boat, but if not, let me bring you guys up to speed just real quick. I picked up this 1989 10 foot low John boat or skiff, whatever you guys want to call it as a flat bottom boat. And it had a couple holes, well, four holes, as you guys can see, I was able to patch those guys shut, welded them up. And then I just grabbed some marine plywood that I had from the formula, glassed that stuff in, made a new transom board, stepped that up because this Evan Rood that I've been running on it is a long shaft. So I wanted to make sure that my cavitation plate was level with the boat. And guys, this little unit has been an absolute ripper. She's not very fast, but let me tell you what, she's an excellent little motor for what she is. She's gotten me out on the water. I've enjoyed myself probably seven or eight times. I've even you know gotten to take it out camping, went up to the beach and went camping with this unit, had all my gear, and the uh, four horse got me everywhere that I wanted to go. Unfortunately, this past weekend, we had her out this last Saturday, and uh, I put in uh, on the Curtis Lee boat ramp here in Jacksonville on the Cedar River. We went out the Cedar River out into the Ortega River and then went all the way up the Ortega River, which is up along here. And I went up to, uh, there's uh, the Ortega Bridge that's just down here by my shop. And uh, on the way out there, she was doing great, had no issues. And uh, we made it out there, we were hanging out. And then I started noticing a little bit of a misfire with this engine. So I was like, hmm, this is a little weird. Let me go ahead and turn her back in and let's take her back to the ramp. So after doing so, got her loaded up, got her back to the shop. I pulled the flywheel off and uh, I was able to pull her apart. And unfortunately there is a cracked coil up underneath the flywheel. Let me go ahead and drop a photo in there for you guys. So as you guys saw there, the cracked coil was leading to my misfiring issue. I have a video that I took when I got her back uh, from the uh, river this past weekend when I was running it in fresh water doing my clean out and then uh, running the carb drive I'll go ahead and throw that video in you guys can hear that slight tick It's actually the coil I think it's arcing off somewhere off onto the flywheel is what I'm going to assume because you hear it Do this weird click 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 and then it'll come back into it and then click click Let me just put in the video real quick Unfortunately, my day of boating was cut short, but it's all good. She got us back to the ramp. She's up here on the stand and I'll get her right. I'll either order some new coils in or I'll rob them from this parts motor here. I didn't make a video or do much talking about this, but this is a 1964 Johnson nine and a half horse. Again, tiller outboard, but it has seen better days. In my honest opinion, it's just gonna end up as a parts motor. When I bought it, I got it super, super cheap knowing that it didn't have a fuel pump on it no fuel pump okay not a big deal but this is a big deal the lower is leaking bad and this is after i wiped it up this was all built up i just cleaned it off so that way i could handle it in and out of my truck and lifting it up and down and then as you guys can see one two three and four lower unit bolts have been broken off in the upper half so farewell if i can rob the coils out of this again this is a 1964 if the 64 coils will work on the 76 then i'll throw them in here and bring her back to life because i know that has good spark and it's actually got decent compression it's got 70 psi on both cylinders and uh you know that's not the best compression but it's also not the worst compression so that's where she may end up if she can help me keep the four horse alive i'll do so and then i'll just let that guy go cheap i think i already have it posted on marketplace for like 150 bucks as a parts motor but anyways the video is not about that the video is about this unit here this one here is in pretty good shape nice and clean the only issue or the only thing that i noticed when i bought it was the paint was flaking off here on the back of the cylinder head and uh that is a tell a, a telltale sign that this thing was ran hot and the guy that i bought it from 
said the impeller is bad. He was able to get it in a bucket of water about a year ago and ran it and there was no water flow. So I took his word on that. The second thing was that it didn't have a rope for the pull starter. So I went ahead and robbed it off of the nine and a half horse and I threw it on this guy here so that way we can get this turned over. And the other thing was the needle for the uh, fuel mixture for the low speed, for some reason it was backed all the way out. So I just loosened up the jam nut, threaded that all the way in until it bottomed out and then turned it about uh, one and a half turns and then tightened back up the jam nut. So. I got all of this assembled. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and pull the plugs out of this guy and we'll check compression on this guy and then we'll see if we can't get it running. After we check compression, I'll pull the flywheel off, I'll clean the points, and then uh, hopefully we can get it cranking. All right, let's go ahead and pull these wires off real quick. Units out, they look pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do five pulls. Check this out here. Got a nice 70 PSI on the lower cylinder. Another five here. And again, with a nice, well, this is about, I'd say about 80 PSI. So about 10 PSI out, not too shabby. Let me go ahead and pull this flywheel off real quick. I whipped up this flywheel puller. Just, uh-oh, losing stuff already. I cut out this flywheel puller on the CNC table here. Real simple. Puller. I'm gonna go ahead, I don't know if it's in the, there we go, in the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy installed. We'll go ahead and pull these, this flywheel off and clean these points. All right, got this cleaned up. The magnet on the flywheel. I've got the points cleaned up. Go ahead and drop the flywheel back on there and see if we can't make some nice spark. Cranking the motor over before, it was making just the tiniest little bit of spark. I unfortunately broke my freaking tripod so I can't put my phone up to show you guys, but you're gonna have to trust my word on this. Anyways, I'll throw this on and uh, we'll crank her over, see what kind of spark we're looking at. And then if we're getting some good spark, I'm definitely gonna hook up my fuel tank to her and see what we can't do. probably should have checked in and told you guys I put a little bit of gas and two-stroke oil mix from my tank in this bottle here and then sprayed it into the carb and ripped that pull handle and as you guys heard she fired right off so we're gonna go ahead and fill her up with some water here in this trash can because these buckets are too dang small and how they pick up is right here and uh, on my other unit it's much lower it's actually right here so I went to go drop it in the bucket and I filled it up and I realized, oh, wait a minute, this doesn't have enough water. So we're gonna fill this up and then uh, we'll see if she uh, wants to crank up and run for, I don't know, maybe 30, 45 seconds. I don't want her to get her too hot. And then obviously this will confirm if uh, I have any water flow coming from the impeller, which the guy said we didn't. So, and so far everything's checked out. It did fire up and it's got decent compression. 
Let me set you guys up on my old makeshift tripod here because I broke the leg off my other one. This is my old one. And this one has a broken leg, it's taped together. Uh, I am so terrible at this YouTube thing. All right. Bolt climbed up. moving any water. That is the tiniest little bit. Look at that. Oh, you guys can't even see. Barely moving any water. Let's see if it goes into gear. See if I can get it to idle down. Cable out. All right, guys. Cable's back on there. Let's see if she wants to run any better for us.
Yep, definitely think I'm gonna have to clean the carburetor. You guys can tell she's getting a little hot, so I'm gonna let her be. We'll go ahead and uh, order up a water pump. Yeah, you can see a little bit of steam coming off of her. I'm gonna go ahead and order up a water pump and we'll get that swapped out. And uh, we'll stop running her without a fully functional one because last thing I wanna do is cook the rings and uh, the pistons in this thing. So at least we know she runs and at least we have a good a a good foundation to work off of excuse me so i'm gonna let her cool off and uh i'll probably start pulling this lower off so that way i can figure out what kind of housing it's got i need to figure out if it's a metal or a plastic housing and then i can order one and we'll be good to go but yeah look at that heat coming off of her i don't know if you guys can see it on the camera but all right that is that for now that is a wrap for today's video. We at least know we got a runner. Hopefully we can get this carb cleaned up, get a water pump in her and see how she performs after that. I'm probably gonna have to figure out uh, the idle situation. I'm hoping that's just carb related. Maybe it's gunked up and filthy and stuff, but I'll be sure to film uh, when I'm taking that guy apart and when I'm doing the water pump so I can keep you guys updated. Other than that, I don't really have anything else for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. I will see you guys in the next upload. Later. Always in the dark.